So did you see part one of this cute little sugar plum junk journal? You want to go watch that before you start this one. This is going to be a lot of fun and you don't want to miss the first part. So away we go. So now we're on part two of this fun little sugar plum junk journal featuring digitals from Etsy from Lorna Taylor's Taylor Made Journals, A Christmas Wish. So links for those, um, those digitals will be down below in the description so you don't want to miss that. Check her out. Lauren has some amazing digitals. So I am going to get started and as I mentioned in the intro this is part two so if you haven't seen part one you might want to go there. The link is up above so uh, check that out and uh, away we go. We are now still creating um, some of the embellishments and the ephemera that are going to go in this cute little journal. Like I said in the first one, this is a fabric journal using Kathy Holden fabrics and an Amazon package. So uh, the Amazon package would be no different than this one, which I'm sure many of you have at home. So a great way to repurpose those. So that's the crinkling inside. So anyways, this is a one signature journal and all those details are in the first video. So I'm gonna go on to kind of where we left off and I will let you know, I did do some more um, elements and different add-ons that I'm not gonna show you until the third video, which will be the flip through. So some of those you will see then but for now, I went through the journal, as you will see, all these blue stickies. Those are all kind of cheat sheets, and I do these sometimes with my journals um, to tell me what I need to add on, um, whether it's just little notes on whether I'm gonna add a belly band or a flip or a pocket or whatever, just to help the process move along. Some of them I just put sticky so I know that I need to put something there, but I haven't really figured out what yet. So it's a great way to kind of cheat and uh, pr move that process along. So I'm going to go to some of the ones that I actually put writing on. And here's one right here. This is a eco dyed paper and I have on here belly band. So we need to add a belly band. And we will do that now. I'm just gonna look and see what I have for paper. It's a really cold and miserable day here where I'm at. So I'm dressed warm and I'm sitting here just watching the snow come down. It's really yucky outside for a better choice of words. So I'm gonna pull out this little folder with some of our elements that go to this digital kit and I'm going to see what we have here. What we can maybe use. So I do have these. These were part of the kit. We can maybe check and see how this would work with it. So I also have some Prima scrapbook paper that kind of goes a little bit with it. But as you can see, those are three by fours. Unless we use the other side, which is an option. So if we use these, that would fit. We could use one of them. All right. I'm just going to grab our paper trailer. Have the top and bottom um, little access here. I think I am going to use this young lady here. So just find the middle. Hopefully you guys are all finding time to craft yourselves and make some fun, creative goodies. I'm trying to find more and more time to craft, which tends to be usually at night when uh, I should be feeling 
and crafty because usually that's when I feel the craftiest. But lately I've been just so tired that uh, I haven't had a lot of chance to do it. Okay, so that, and now, just try and find, I'm gonna use Su Quang for this, if I can find it. I have so many things on my desk right now. So I will find my Su Quang tape, and we will go from there. So I've got my Su Quang tape here, and I believe this is the five width. So I'm just going to put a little bit on each end because this is a belly band. We don't want to put any in the middle or on the sides because we won't be able to put anything under our belly band then. So I'm just going to the ends, ripping that off. And sometimes with having these fake nails, although they might be nice looking, I find it difficult and you wouldn't think it would be to peel off the ends of my tape. Okay, so I took that off, and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give it a little bit of color on just on the edges. Just so we can see the division. Because once we have all of our things underneath our belly band, we might not see it as much. Looks like it's time for a new pad on my on my ink blending tool. There we go. A little bit of color. So it just adds a little bit of dimension to your creations. So I'm going to put that somewhat in the middle. You might, for those of you that like to measure, go ahead and measure. I just eyeball it. I'm not a measurer. So see, look how pretty that is. And now you can put things like, these aren't going to stay here, but just to give you an idea, your cards. Things can go underneath your belly band and they hold it securely. So number one thing done, we have a belly band. So we're gonna move on to our next thing. This one says a picture. And with this, when I say picture, I'm probably meaning to put something like Tim Holtz or one of our vintage ephemera type pieces. I have a whole bunch in here. Let's see what we have. There are some really cute ones. Let's see. Well, this one's really neat because it has pink. And since that tends to be some of the colors in here, that one would be neat. And so would this one, because it has pink and blue. Alright. This looks like this one's in French, and this one... I'm going to butcher this. I know a little bit of German, but this says... Herzliche Neujahr... It's hard to read. Schwinche? I don't know what that says. I am guessing that's Scandinavian. I don't know. That might be a neat one. So I'm going to put both of these here and we are going to come back to that one. Come up with an idea. So now on this one I say stamps. So on this one I am thinking I am going to do um, and we use this parchment colored cardstock probably on here but I am probably going to use some Tim Holtz stamps on here so I'm going to just pull them out because I want something a little bit larger and we have some large ones here with our Tim Holtz. So I'll try and find something that's kind of in the theme. Not all of these are Christmassy, clearly, <laughs> but we can find something that works for us. I really like these sentiments. This is the Christmas time that came out, I'm thinking it was a couple years ago. 
These ones are nice also, the poinsettias. And so are these. Hmm. Um, these ones are neat too. You know, I think I'm actually going to do this one. Um, partly because it's kids, and there's a lot of kids featured in this one. Um, but what I'm going to do with this one is I am not going to do it in a dark color. I'm going to do it in uh, pinks or blues. So I am going to grab our clear acrylic block. And sometimes I find it a little bit more difficult to do stamping in the book like this just because for many of you who have Misty's or the stamp platform, that is definitely a lot easier. But our book is already put together. So I'm going to put that down like that. What is this sentiment? Always know in your heart that you are far bigger than anything that can happen to you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put that down there. And this is one reason also I do this on paper. Another reason is because this is very thin paper, I'll show you again, this is very thin paper, it would go through. So we're just going to do this here and if we make a mistake, you can always redo it. So that's one nice thing is about doing it this way as well. Um, because we have pinks and blues in here, I'm just going to try this ink and see what it's like doing it with this color. So this is uh, the Ranger Archival Ink in Garden Patina. So I'm going to try this color and see what we think. And you really want to get this one good because there's a lot of a lot of stamping to be done on this one. Try not to bounce too much on here so the camera doesn't shake. There's a lot of background on this one. So you want to cover it thoroughly. It's taking a long time because there's just so much. Let's see what it looks like in garden patina. All right, see how this one works. See if we got enough ink on it. All right, so let's try this. I'm gonna flip it. We have nice, clean, crisp paper, and that down. So you could get out your smusher or your baron or whatever and do it that way. I'm just going to push it down for now. Okay. So let's see how our image turned out. Not great because a little boy. So let's try this again. So now we know the areas that we need to apply more pressure or do. Or should we try it in a darker color? Should we try black? Let's try black. Black is so much easier because um, I use actually for these things normally a uh, VersaFine Clair. I'm going to leave that little bit of blue on there because it probably won't show up anyway. Um, for this one I'm actually using Twilight and it's like a dark dark blue. Um, I could use the Nocturne which is black but it might be slightly too dark. This one will be no problem inking because this is really juicy for anybody that uses VersaFine Claire. It's a very juicy ink pad. I really like this one. It's probably my favorite ink. So look how juicy that is. So let's try this one. And now we know where we need to apply more pressure and it's on that little boy. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just going to apply some pressure. You see where that little boy is? Hopefully we can get that all done. Just keep applying pressure. This is a very thick acrylic block. Okay, let's see if this worked. Awesome. All right, so that turned out really, really well. So we can pop that on there. So I'm just going to get out our trimmer again, and we're going to trim that up. in the background having a little bit of a cat nap right now so there's that one and I am just wondering if we put it on here yeah I really like that you know what we could maybe do is put some paper around here just as a background leave our grid and then I'm going to punch a hole in this and we'll use this as a pocket and then we'll just ink the outside edges so let's try that um, what kind of paper can we use for this I'll just pull out a couple but we're just sitting here I like both of these these are both very nice let's see which one looks better Wow, I like them both. They don't really go with the, uh, the color scheme in here. Oh, I like that too. Wow, too many options. Um, what else do we have that we can use? We have so many options. So much Christmas stuff, like I said in the previous video. I have more Christmas than I have of anything else I do. By a long shot. Um, yeah, lots of Christmas. So, just trying to find... I have lots of Christmas projects on the go. And some of those will be coming up here soon. Um... Yeah, for those of you who are scrapbookers, I have lots of scrapbooking stuff coming too. Because I've had people saying that they want me to do more scrapbooking as well. So I haven't I haven't ignored you. I heard that loud and clear, so I will do some scrapbooking stuff as well. Alright, let's find some paper. Okay, so I got this paper pack, which is supposed to be wrapping paper, at our local dollar store. And there's some really cute images on here. I thought they would be perfect for stuff like this. Um, yeah, like there's so many really cute designs. And it's wrapping paper, but you could use it for stuff like this. So. Another one I should use. This is a combo of all four of them. Maybe I will use this one. So I'm going to grab out a sheet of this. They're big long sheets. And I am just going to cut myself one square from it. And the dollar stores have some great items. You just have to really look through and sometimes really use your imagination because not everything that is there you'd normally think would work into a junk journal, but there's 
There are so many things that you could. All right. So I am going to just check this out here. You could measure this. I tend to, most of the time anyways, just fold and cut. It's kind of the cheating method. So there's that fold. And then <laughs> just fold it over. And then this fold. There we go. So now we're going to cut it. And then I'm just going to trim up this edge just so it's cleaner. There we go. Uh, with this one, because this is very lightweight, I am going to put some soup going on here. I'm not going to use a liquid glue because I don't want it to really buckle uh, or seep through because it's quite a thin paper. to follow that grid a little bit. So here I am going to take my circle punch. And this is a one inch punch. And just go like so. So I just that little bit. So you could do something like that. I'm just showing you the differences because I'm actually going to do a larger hole. But I'm going to show you that that's how that one would turn out if you do a little bit of a one inch. So this one is a little bit bigger, and this is a one and a half. Actually, it says one and a half, I actually think it's two. So that's what that one would look like, and that's what I'm going for is that look. All right, so now we're gonna do what we did before and ink up the outside edges. it comes together and again it'll give us that dimension when it's on our page with all the colors and then this will be your pocket so I go like that just like so and then on top of that I am going to add some lacy trim right here so I'm going to add some of our Su Kuang on here. And again, you just want to do the three sides. You can even get a smaller one if you wanted to get the three um, Su Kuang and put it on here just so it's a thinner adhesive. So you have more space for your pocket images to go in or your pocket pieces. I'm just going to use a five today though.
And for those of you that might like this journal, when video three comes out, this journal will be listed on my Etsy channel and also on my Facebook page. So you want to go check those out if that's something you're interested in. Okay, so there's that. And now we are going to add some trims on the side. And I have many different ones. It just depends what we want to do. Uh, I don't want anything too wide or thick. I will put this onto another page. Some more pom poms, but in gray. Uh, let's see what we have. This one might be good. So let's try that. You have to be careful with what ones you pick because some of them might be too thin, some might be too wide. There's a whole gamut of different things you're kind of looking at. Just cut off this tape. Hopefully you're liking this. I'm sure having a lot of fun creating it. So when I do something like this, where I'm adding a pocket page, sometimes you need to be somewhat careful and you also have to be aware of what's on the other side. Like here, this is a flip on the other side. So with this one, I'm just going to put our ribbon like that and make sure it's not tacked over on the other side because then our flip won't flip. Okay, so I'm going to cut our ribbon about there because it will stretch out. So I'm going to grab just our glitter glue and I do not have the fine metal tip on this one. So hopefully it doesn't come out too thick. Okay, just looking at the width of that. Of course, I need to pin it again. There we go, that should be fine. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit. Hopefully, it doesn't come again too thick. And now we can tack that down. You always want to have a good look and see if there's a right or a wrong side. I think this is the right side. All right. Looks good. Looks good. that one and then here that one okay all right so we're just gonna tack that down again a little bit firmer there so that's that and then we can put something in here just to give you an idea this won't stay in there but there's your pocket So there's that one, and then we can still flip it over. All right, so there's, there's those things. And here, we will just maybe slide some things in, depending on what it is, like so. And then we can always clip it as well, or move them up and clip it. Yep, so something will go in there. This side here, I show another pocket. And here, because we already did that pocket on that page, what I'm thinking we might do is a corner pocket. So I'm going to see what we have for images here. 
And what I might do even if we don't have anything wide enough is we might make something. Because what I was thinking is even here, like we have this, we could turn this into a pocket and have things there. Or if you wanted to, we could have like something kind of come across like that with just some kind of fancier paper um, to make it a little bit wider. So that's another option. Um, maybe that's what we will do is have some more paper. So I'm going to pull out some more papers and we will go from there. So I found this paper and I thought this would be perfect. Perfect, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is just, again, we're going to eyeball a little bit. And I am going to plop that up. Give us a little bit of an idea of where that needs to be cut. And then here we can just gauge it. We'll just play it by ear. So I'm going to cut that like so. And then here, just a little bit off, not a lot. And then I'm just going to cut a corner off of this area. Okay. So that looks great. So we have our little pocket there. And we can put our Santa on there. Or if we don't want that Santa, we can put something else. It's a little on the wider side. We have all these other ones that come with the kit. Postcard, that one's kind of neat. So we could put, you know what? I think what I'm gonna do is put a postcard here and then have one of Tim Holtz's little people on here. So let's do that. So now we're gonna get out our Sukwang again. And we're going to do just that edge, this edge, and this edge. Actually, no, let's do two edges because we can even slide it in from the other side. We don't have to do all three. Okay, so, so then when I stick that down, the edges that are stuck are this one here and this one here. So then you have open area to put stuff in. So we'll do it that way. So we're going to pull off the tape backing on it and there we go I am going to pop that down try and get that straight as you can sometimes it's difficult with Sukwang you want to make sure you get it right or else it is not coming up okay so we have that we could put our postcard down here as well if you didn't want to put something above you could have some adhesive along all three sides and then put this um, use this as another pocket so you could have a pocket here and a pocket here but for today I am NOT doing that I am going to put something up top and this is a really cool postcard idea because you can actually write on it um, you can use it as a journaling journaling tool as well you don't just have to have it looking pretty. It could actually be functional and you can write on it. So, perfect. So we're gonna stick that down. Just taking off all of our tape backings. Trying to get the feel of these nails. I've had them for a while, but and I've been wearing nails for a few years. I started wearing them again during the pandemic. I'm a nail biter. So I started wearing them during the pandemic so I wouldn't put my fingers in my mouth and get sick. So that was kind of my main tool of why I did that. Um, and actually it helped. So now with everybody getting sick again, I thought maybe it's time to get nails again. So that is why I did it. 
Okay, so I'm just trying to find my Tim Holtz people because I have a bag full of them. I've got a whole container full. I, I have more Tim Holtz dead people than I will ever need probably, but I sure like them. I just kind of hoard them because they're so cool. All right. We have so many here. Again, I, I'm trying to find on this time ones that are sitting because I'm going to have them sit on top of the postcard unless there's something else that uh, works well for us. That's too tall. There's so many here. These little girls are cute. I've used them so many times. Um, I'll keep that one there. That's an idea, but I kind of don't want it because it's a little on the tall side as well. There's so many cool ideas here. I kind of like the kid idea because there's a lot of kids featured, it seems like, in this kit. So the kids kind of go well with it. And I don't, if I can, possible. I'm trying to remember too what people I've used so I don't use keep using the same people because some work better than others and I have multiples of these people too. I usually buy two of each kit or each package so of all these people. Sometimes I buy more because I go through so many of them. That one's cute too. Hmm. This is a tough decision. I was really hoping to find one that was sitting, but that might not happen. I've used that boy already in this kit. Okay, I have a lot of that boy. I think I've got five of him. Oh, this is a perfect one. I just saw it as soon as I pulled these guys out. I wonder if this would work. Okay, so that is a good choice. This one here. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer the little child sitting there? Or do you prefer the brother and sister? I think I'm going to go this time with the little kids sitting there. So with this one, I am going to use this the art glitter glue for this. And this does dry clear, so if you get too much, it will not show through, which I like. And one reason I really like this glue. I know there's other ones that do the same, but I'm quite partial to this one. Okay, so we'll put that little, I guess it's a girl, right there. And we might come back to this later and put other little elements here. So there's another one that we've got done. Okay, this one here, it says picture. And when I was saying picture, I was thinking of one of these type of pictures of Tim Holtz. Uh, this one's kind of a neat one. These seem like they're all skiing. This one I like because it's a giant toboggan in the background. This one I really like too. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use this one. I think I'll use this one because it's a Christmas tree. And I kind of want one that's vertical. So let's go with that. And I am going to ink this one up just a slight bit. Not that it'll stay, because this is kind of a glossier style of paper, but hopefully it will. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Sukwang on here, just a little bit, and I'm putting it on the insides, and the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use our vintage looking tape that we made, and there's a video to that one as well. 
that I've just recently put up as well that you might want to see. And the link will be down below in the description. Okay, so we've got that. Now I'm going to add our vintage look tape and we will put that on here as well. So here are my vintage looking tape pieces that have been made previously. I'm going to pull them off our sheet. I'll use this one. And I'm just going to cut it also gently. And with these, again, just use a little bit of your art glitter glue because it will dry clear. I'm going to put it just in the corners. And on this one, same idea, I'm going to give it a little bit of a cut. A little bit of adhesive on here. And again, stick it in the corner. There we go. So there's that one. And it looks like it's been stuck down just with that tape. But really, we have our Su Quang on the back side. So there's a page done there. This one I'm going to come back to because it's a pocket with a closure. Because we have to make the closure first. So I'll come back to that one. This is a double sided pocket tags. And what I mean by that is we are going to make a double pocket so a pocket here and a pocket down here and they're both open on top so you could do it that way if you really wanted to and you wanted to put tags in the sides you could close these three sides and put it in each side on the side of your book so that is another option as well so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for if we had another pocket that would work for this. You could even create a pocket. It wouldn't have to be um, on the same line. This one here that I'm showing you, that is actually a Prima pocket. So that is what they have there. There's so many different options we can use. I'm just going to pull one out and show you what I come up with. I'm just gonna see how wide this is. That would work. Okay. I'm just going to cut this. So I'm holding this here. Um, so it's the same width. But I'm actually going to keep this with the height it is because it doesn't have to be the same height. And then we have that on the back side if we want to use that. So here and here, we've got a double pocket. If you wanted to, you could use a background paper even, so you can have it even higher. But when you think about it, you're going to have different elements in here, so you're not going to see here because this is a pocket. And here, I'm going to maybe lower this just a little bit because once we have our elements in here, they're going to cover the top part of this. So if that is the case, if you wanted to, you could always put this in the bottom. So nothing is covering this and 
this part will be covered. So nothing's going to be missing really because all of your images are up top. And this you wanted to flip it. But I kind of think I like this on this side. Because, like I said, all of our images are going to come up to this point anyway. So let's ink this one because the bottom one is already inked. Try and have them look somewhat the same. Okay. Very nice. All right. So now we can tack these down. And I'll tell you what we're doing with those. So we're going to have it like that. So you're going to flip it that way so you can remember which way you want to put your adhesive. So hopefully you guys are all planning out some great Christmas activities. And are going to see some family this Christmas season. I myself am spending Christmas Eve with my in-laws and my children. And... Uh, we will see them on Christmas Eve, like I said, and then come home. And then my kids, who live on their own, will be staying overnight at our house and having breakfast with us and opening gifts. And then spending Christmas with their cousin, who they're very close with, um, at my son's house for Christmas night. Christmas night we're having my sister and her husband and my mom and her boyfriend over for Christmas dinner, so that'll be nice. It'll be different because we've never spent Christmas without our children around, so it'll be different, but it'll be good. Okay, so there we go. So there's that one, and then this top part is open. We can use that as a pocket, and like I said before, I could have done this before, but you can do it now. You can make your hole in here as well so there's our opening and you can go in and ink that too after the fact if you want or do it before whatever works for you there you go so here since i have my hole open there i can do it here as well or you know if you didn't have the image there you could move it we have images everywhere so i'm going to do that now There we go. And again, you're going to ink it. And then we're going to move this down a little bit. What I'm going to do before I do that, I am going to add a little bit of fun, funky washi. This is 49 and Market. And we are going to add some washi on here. I thought this is perfect because you have your peppermint twist there. This is kind of like peppermint twists as well. So I'm going to put that down below. All right. Let's try and make it somewhat straight. And then rip it. So that one's done. And this one. This one's kind of neat too. It is reds. But because this has got pink, but it's a similar type of design, so I'm also going to put that down right above our peppermint twist one. Let's try and find the end. Sometimes these are not easy to find the end, and I haven't used this one yet, so come on, washi. Oh, is that it? There we go, found it. So this one is a little bit thinner than the other one. It'll leave just a little bit of a space. I can trim that and go like there. There we go. So I'm gonna get out my fine tip scissors and there we go. All right, so now we're going to put that one down. And again, this one is on the same sides that we did before. 
it's kind of a cheat sheet too when you do your your punch if you do your punch first because then you know exactly where your adhesive goes because it's not on the punch side okay there we go so hopefully you guys are able to take some time off at christmas time if you have work so it's not all work and you can have some time to play or have Christmas concerts or Christmas parties or whatever you kind of like to do. I heard lots of people saying that the malls have just been crazy busy lately. I have not set foot in a mall, so I wouldn't know, but I sure heard that they're busy. Okay, so there we go. So this give you an idea of what this might look like once you start putting your pieces in. So that is our double pocket. So we have that one done. This one I'm going to leave because you can use this for journaling. Here, this is gonna be mixed media. So we're going to do some mixed media on here. So I'll show you that later. This one is going to be a window envelope. We have to create that, so we'll put the window envelope on there later. I set here another pocket, so we will wait on that one. We're putting a fabric flip in here. We're going to do some stencils. I have a vellum pocket on here, but I don't know if we're going to do a vellum pocket or not. Um, one thing I thought we might be able to do... Um, <laughs> well, I'll put that one back on there for now. We'll think about that one. This says picture again, so we'll come back to that one. This is another pocket. Here's a corner pocket, and this is actually what I was looking for. So this one here, this was part of the kit. I am just going to fold this over. If you have a scoreboard or a bone folder, you could use that as well. I have both, but I'm just being lazy. There's that, and yeah, and then I'm going to fold this one over. So this is going to be a corner pocket, and then I'm going to cut that off. All right. So with this one, I am going to use the Su Quang again. That, and then we're going to put it on this side. All right, so now I'm going to pull off our adhesive These are still kind of tricky. So it's been very exciting lately. My son just finished university. So he's been in university for five or six years and he just finished. So that's exciting for him. And my daughter just had her last final so they can finally have a breath of fresh air and relax until after the holidays. My son is going to take some time off and then do go down his career path here probably in the spring. And my daughter is full-time working and a full-time student so she's busy with work. So 
she's a busy gal. Okay, so we're gonna pop that down. Okay, look how cute that is. So we can put all of our pieces in there. Again, you put all your different pieces or whatever you have, go into that pocket. So that pocket is done. And we can put more pieces on here. Or you can dolly it up. You could put, you know, if you really wanted to, you could put some different scrapbook paper or whatever in the back of that as well. So here's another double pocket. This one I wanted to show you. Um, I have Brad Pullover Stencil. So what I mean by that is I have these really funky, cute, I have two different packages, but I'm gonna, going to use the pink one. But the Crushed Velvet Brad's from Doodlebug. And I had planned on putting some paper on this one and then adding a Brad. I'm gonna take one Brad out. Oh, they're so soft, the crushed velvet. And we are going to put a little bit of um, paper or something on here. This is a eco dyed sheet of paper. Okay, what I might do. Um, I have to have something a little more neutral, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm. Especially since it's on um, right next to this one here. So what do we have here? I have a whole bunch of little pieces that I've got from different kits. Maybe this is what I will do with this one here. I'd love to mention who I got this one from or what kit, but honestly I don't know because it's been cut apart. It could be Taylor Made Journals, but I'm not sure. So here, that's what I'll do. I'll tack that one down. So I'm going to actually put our tape on here this time. And it is folded over because when it was eco dyed, I think it was stuck in the pan possibly, I'm not really sure. So we're going to do it like this. And you can always flip this back over to in the time being if you need to. But once we tack this down, it might not flip back over again because it's going to be hooked down so you don't see the brad enclosure. All right, and then we're going to take that part off. Hopefully this all makes sense. You'll see it as soon as I show you. So there's that. And now we're going to put, actually, you know what? I'm going to put something else below there some color. La, 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 la. <laughs> what can we put there? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this and then put that over top. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to lift this up just cut around it. Easy enough to do. You just follow your page and trim it. There we go. So that's done. And then this, you can even do uh, yeah, we'll still put that on there. So I'm going to just 
a little bit of glue on here and do it this way. I'm just going to go in the middle for now so we can see where exactly we need it on the edges because this is going to be longer than what we need. Trim it off. And then trim off here. And then here, we're going to poke that through there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pin Just kind of make your hole a little bit bigger just so our bread can fit through. So there's our pin, here's our bread, and I purposely put our bread so it's right where our paper ends. So it looks like it's kind of holding it there in a sense. There we go, like it. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some kind of neutral paper here. And I thought perfect paper for that would be Tim Holtz. So let's have a look. <laughs> 